Greetings viewer, Jason here from Biker Bites and I'm back on the go track. Why have I come out on the go track? You may wonder, you may not. Well, I thought I'd just go out for a bit of a spin and uh, close the lid. I thought I'd just go out for a bit of a spin and uh, find somewhere nice to park and talk about a new series that I would like to do. Alrighty, so as you know, I recently bought a BMW F800 GS after saying goodbye to the trusty KLR650. This is a 2013 model. It only had 7,500 kilometers on the clock and it looks great. So that's why I got it. Well, Besides other reasons, but that's another video, which I haven't done yet. Um, I've just had it serviced, just had it, it went in for its 10,000k service. Um, dead giveaway is the chain, look at that. Very nice. So it's stock, with exception to the muffler. Akrapovic, 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 however you want to pronounce it, that's what it is. But there's nothing else on here. Um, so the idea of the series is to build this bike up bit by bit and take you along with me. So um, I've already put in the pivot pegs. Um, so that's the first video that you guys are going to see, me installing the pivot pegs. Next comes a bash plate, engine guards, side guards, um, pannier racks and a top rack. Panniers themselves, um, GPS, oh and don't forget the um, Totoro chain oiler I won from Justin at Kamikaze Moto. Should be a good addition. And clothes, because I don't have any proper adventure bike clothes. So I'm going to have to get boots, trousers, I may replace the jacket, I don't know yet. Um, I'd like to get rid of this street bike helmet and get an adventure helmet, more in keeping with the style, but it's not really high on my list. So there you go, that's the plan. So each video will be adding a bit to the bike um, and hopefully you'll be uh, joining me, which would be great. So there you go. All right, let's see what we get in the pack. Let's see if we can open it first. Yeah, well, that was surprisingly easy. All right, space instructions. Installation instructions. Pivot peg stickers. Always good to get stickers. Spaces. The nice new shiny pegs themselves. They're quite heavy actually, I'm surprised. So there's one. Here's two, and then we've got a couple of couple of pins. I hope that's not out of focus. And that appears to be your lot. Coolio, 
let's get on with it. Right, so first job would be to take these off. There we go. There we go. That appears to be it. And the, the peg itself. All right, so I'll just give that a quick clean up and I'll do the same to the other side. Okay, so I've done one. Um, I did it behind your backs, guys, just so I could figure out exactly how to do it before I can can um, can uh, put it onto video. Bit of grease. So there you go. Looks pretty swanky. I haven't bent the um, split pin back yet. Not until I'm happy with the other ones on, and I made sure I got everything in the right place. And there you can see it's got its ouch, 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 ouch. That's spiky. That all works good. Okay, now I'll show you how it was, or how I did it. So you've got a spacer, they give you a spacer. Um, here's the other split pin. They give you a new clip, spring. Um, here's the original uh, peg thingy, whatever you'd call it. And they give you this little block thing. Quite descriptive aren't I? Right, peg. So this is for the left hand side. So what you got to do is you get your little spindle type thing, give it a bit of a grease and you get your washer, your spacer, give that a bit of a grease as well and the idea behind that is that it will actually stick to this for reasons you will find out later. Right, so make sure I'll make sure I'm putting it in the right way. We pop this through here, push it all the way through and then put the spacer on. Like so. So we've got that in there. And you see. Then we get the spring. Pop the spring on like that. And then I like to just put a bit more grease on here. Like that. And then we can now fit this to the bike. Alrighty, so. I just slide this in like that. Give it a bit of a push. Yep. Come on, in you go. And then pop the pin in. Biker Bites making the mistakes so you don't have to. Right, come on you bugger, get in. And by inserting this pin in here, it will push that rod out. There you go, can you see it's coming out? Come on. Obviously, if it's not lined up, it's gonna be hard work. 
There you go. Come on. Get in there. There we go. It's in. You don't actually need that. It's just to help that um, spacer stay in place with the grease. And there you can see that's solid. Now do remember that these pins here are actually different lengths. So make sure that you've got the right one on the right side. Otherwise you'll find you've got too much um, play and probably not enough on the other one. Right, now we get the uh, washer and the uh, split pin. Okay, so that goes back on there. Hmm, awkward place. Go on. It's fiddly. Especially if this hole is pointing in not the greatest of directions. I'm going to move it round. There we go, that's a better position. Oops, washer. I'm sorry I keep knocking the box that the GoPro's on. Go on. There we go. All right, so you can still see there's a bit of a space there, but... Nah, it ain't gonna come off. Right, and that's basically it, guys. All I've got to do now is bend the, uh, the split pins back to um, secure the center pin, and we're done. So there we go. That's the right-hand side. Good. Left hand side, exactly the same. Ooh, spiky. So there you go. So the bits that I have left over is obviously the OEM pegs. Um, some sort of type spacer that I believe would have fitted in between there. Uh, the two springs and the two original uh, split pins. So you use or um, you keep the the main pin that goes through here. This thing here, you use that, you reuse that to put your new pegs on which means you're just left with this little collection of bits at the end of it. But everything else is provided in the pack. Right, so there we go. Uh, time for a test ride. Mm -hmm. All right, so here I am. So first impressions, they feel a lot comfier on the feet with the bigger footprint, obviously. Second impression is My feet have got to relearn. Look at that, see? <laughs> I've got to relearn the actual positions now of where to put my feet in relation to the gear stick, uh, gear lever, and the uh, brake lever. Because it's all out of whack now. Which way should we go? Damn, there's something in this helmet that's tickling my chin. It's beginning to feel a bit more comfortable now. Feels like I'm back on the KLR. So if you're interested, they cost me uh, $238 Australian from adventuremodal.com.au
Now, because there's no rubber on these, I do feel a slight bit of vibration, but not a lot. Not a lot. Nothing to be uh, concerned about. It's a beautiful out here. things I will do is just move my shift lever maybe down a notch or two because the pivot pegs as they don't have the rubber top I think my foot is actually a little bit lower than before so that's made shifting a little awkward just that little bit of extra height um, has made a difference, or rather, the removal of that little bit of height has made a difference. I've had a few miss shifts, so I think I'll try that and see how it feels. So keep that in mind, folks. Shifting. I don't know whether I would get. See, look again. I don't know whether I get used to it or I just move that shift lever. Pegs installed. Hope you enjoyed this video. Coming up next will be. So stick around. Bye, bikes. Over and out.